We're here at Craters of the Moon National Monument uh, in southern Idaho, part of the Snake River Plain. And one of our signature parks that showcases a real diversity of young uh, volcanic landforms. Um, I'm out in an area, the big hill kind of to my west here uh, is Big Cinder Butte. This is the tallest cinder cone volcano in this part of the monument. It's about 700 feet tall. But what we're actually going to look at here uh, is as you kind of scan the landscape just behind me, there's these kind of weird mounds out here of rock. Most of the ground is cinders, uh, probably cinders, maybe from Big Cinder Butte or another one that's kind of covered this area and made it kind of flat. But these mounds of rock look pretty, uh, you know, they don't look like they're that noteworthy, I suppose, but they have actually some interesting features in them. So we're going to go uh, over here and look at a couple of these here. So here's uh, one of these mounds of basalt and we can see that there's these strange uh, cylindrical holes. This one actually has two in it right here. If we go over to this next one, uh, we see another two. So there's these sort of cylindrical holes <coughs> of various diameters. They don't go down very far, but it begs the question, what are these things? Um, if we notice a little bit closer, it seems like they've got one side that's a little bit higher and one side that's kind of broken off and, and is lower here. There's more rock on this side and that actually matches up with this one here. So <clears throat> what these are during this eruption and these, these uh, lavas here, these basalts are a little over 2000 years old. These erupted mainly, there's a, a set of fissures, cracks that run through this part of the monument. And so we would have had lava uh, kind of spewing out of those fissures, but mainly forming lava flows. And as those flows advance downhill, uh, in places there was already a landscape here that had trees. And so as those lava flows wrapped around the trees, it formed these features here. And I made sort of a silly, uh, don't laugh too much, but a nice little handy dandy diagram of this that kind of shows exactly how these things might have formed. So initially uh, we have these trees out in front of the advancing lava flow and then as the lava actually wraps around the trunks of the trees uh, it slows down and it cools because the trees are a lot cooler than the lava and then later as the lava drains away what we're left with then are these uh, cylindrical holes where the tree trunks once stood. Of course, the trees uh, get burned up by the lava and incinerated, so they, they're burned uh, to a crisp. But we have these mounds of uh, basaltic lava, and on the uphill side, we get these sort of little ropes or this sort of buildup. So as the lava flow hits the tree trunk, it slows down its advancement a little bit. So these are called lava trees. Um, we'll walk over to a couple more that are over here. <clears throat> really cool features um, that you don't see everywhere where there's these basaltic lava flows. Um, but these turn out to be really valuable to geologists. Um, so here's another one here, kind of a smaller one next to it. Uh, that's a pretty, pretty good one there. Um, and then maybe one last big one over here. But these are pretty instructive because sometimes, if we're lucky, there's, uh, with these younger eruptions, they're only a few thousand years old. It's kind of a nice big one there. We actually get preserved along the walls of the, la the lava tree, this landform feature, maybe little bits of charcoal. And that charcoal can be dated, um, and that helps us date the lava flow. So the lava obviously took out the tree. So by measuring the date of the charcoal, when that wood was burned, we're essentially measuring the date of the lava flows. And that's the primary data that we use in a place like Craters the Moon to distinguish a, uh, flows and their ages. So this flow is, you know, 2000 years old. This one is, you know, 2100 years old, 2400 years old. That's how we get those specific numeric dates. We can figure out how old they are relative to each other by seeing how they sort of stack up against each other or this lava flow went around another one. So by looking at those uh, relationships. So pretty, pretty interesting thing here. Uh, sometimes, I don't know if any of these show this, but sometimes the impression of the bark on the lava tree, this one's sort of collapsed here, uh, but the impression of the bark can be preserved well enough 
that uh, a botanist can actually tell what kind of tree it was actually maybe identify uh, the specific species so this one's kind of cool here kind of just a little toad still looking rock uh, again this would be the uphill side this is the direction that the lava came it wrapped around the tree trunk and over on this side we can see this beautifully hollowed out um, <coughs> cylinder that is where the tree actually was. Um, I'm not quite sure I can make out any bark impressions. I'm not a good botanist, but might be there anyway. So yeah, another cool feature. One of the things that sets apart uh, Craters of the Moon, one of the neat volcanic features are these uh, cool little lava trees that we see here in this part of the park. So fantastic. Another great little gem here in our Craters of the Moon video series.